This is Valley News Live at 5. New on Valley News Live at 5, Sanford Health just announcing that tomorrow will be the last day of its vaccination clinic at Gordman's. The reason they gave for closing the center is the accessibility of the COVID-19 vaccine at their primary care and walk-in clinics. Gordman's was being used as a vaccination clinic since January. The waiting, list are, waiting lists rather, are getting longer at area daycares. At Small Wonders Preschool and Child Care in Fargo, the number currently stands at a staggering 430. Officials say they have enough space to enroll new children, but not enough teachers to meet the ratio required by the state. Valley News Team's J.C. Dodd tells us how the staffing shortage is taking over the FM area. It's very heartbreaking. We've never had to do this. We've had the center open at the center 22 years. We have never had to feel like we're breaking hearts with the families that call. Small Wonders office manager Brenda Crable says she has to deliver the heartbreaking news to at least 10 to 15 families every day. They don't have an open spot for their child and they don't know when they will. It's hard to tell them, I'm sorry, I don't have anything for you at this point. And the staffing shortage is affecting several child care businesses throughout the Fargo-Moorhead area. They're calling other places too and they're not finding any better or anything else either, so it's, it's hard. It's really hard. Executive Director for Small Wonders Lynette Lean says they haven't had the chance to accept a new child since January 2020 due to the staffing shortage. Katie Moore says she has been persistent in the search for daycare and preschool to enroll her kids in since February. She says some places could take her five-year-old, but no one could take her two-year-old due to the ratio of teacher to child required by the state. And that seems to be the biggest problem is that there's just not enough staff to cover the needs for these younger age kids because of the state requirements for age. And Crable says some families have told her if they can't find childcare, they may have to quit their careers just to care for their children. You can't work if you don't have childcare. Which leaves Lean wondering. What is truly going to happen to the FM area and other businesses? In Fargo, J.C. Dodd, Valley News Live. Small Wonders employees told us the current staff is taking it day by day and they're hoping that the staff shortage will soon turn around so they can welcome new children through their doors. A new program can help kids whose parents are unable to care for them. The Kinship ND program fills immediate short-term needs while helping caregivers navigate av available services and programs by connecting them to resources. Qualifying caregivers include most North Dakota residents who have a relationship and provide full-time care of the child. For more information, visit KinshipND.com. Dean Brashani says as he enters his 12th year as the president of North Dakota State University, he will support the search for the next leader of the institution. Yesterday, Brashani accepted an offer from the Board of Higher Education to stay on for the next 18 months, after which he will return to teaching at NDSU on a full-time basis. Brashani says together we worked hard to make progress on many fronts. He first became president of NDSU in 2010. With little or no wind, we're getting a full chance to feel the heat, so to speak. Let's find out from Hutch what is right now the temperature and what you can expect tonight. Hutch? Mike, thanks so much. As we take a look in at the, the camera from Dakota Magic Casino, we see Interstate 29 there and well, off to the south and to the west. Uh, looks like a little bit of a fire going on there. Temperatures are sizzling hot out to the uh, west where we do have some near 90 degree readings in Jamestown and it is in the 90s for Bismarck. 88 for Grand Forks, 90 in Hallock and Langdon as well. A little cooler out in Bemidji and here is why. Some showers and thunder showers rumbling through. They're moving to the south southeast at about 15 miles per hour is all heading in the general direction of the Bemidji area at this hour. So that's keeping you cooler and the sizzle is still hot in the Pacific Northwest, just not as hot as it's been the last couple of days. Still triple digits for us. Temperatures in the 80s, light wind and clear skies in Fargo. Grand Forks, similarly, you're going to enjoy some pleasant conditions, albeit dry. Coming up, I'll have details on the hot weather heading our way for the holiday week, Mike, and we'll look into our next best chance of rain in your hour-by-hour -hour forecast in a few minutes.
Bond has been set at $50,000 for a Sargent County man accused of firing a gun at a man in his car, almost killing him. Gerald Dill is charged with attempted murder and reckless endangerment. Officers were called Monday night to a shooting west of Gwinner. The victim says Dill shot him while the victim was on a public road after he told the victim that he had something threatening to kill Dill for the past 10 days. Bond was set at $50,000. Fargo police say that they clock someone driving 105 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour zone last night. It happened along the 2700 block of 52nd Avenue South. Police say it's an area that they get a lot of complaints about speeding and cars racing. The driver will have to pay a $450 fine for going 70 miles per hour over the speed limit. Look for more on dangers of excessive speeding tonight on Valley News Live at five, uh, 9 rather, and at 10. Authorities in Benson County are warning people about a recent vandalism involving broken light bulbs at a school playground. Sheriff's investigators found light bulbs on the playground of the Leeds Public School. The glass shards were found in mulch and on the bottom of the slide, posing a serious safety concern, especially for kids. If you have any information, call the number on your screen, 701-473-5357. A Minnesota man has pleaded guilty to setting a Detroit Lakes RV business on fire last winter. Daniel Kaufman is charged with second degree arson and theft in connection to that incident. It happened at Wold's RV sales on Highway 10 on December 29th. Investigators say Kaufman's phone was pinged in the area of the arson and his truck was spotted as well. They also say Kaufman stole a fish house and was trying to sell it online. They seized his phone and filed several incriminating searches, including arson reporting hotline and how to make a fake car title. A scary situation for a family in North Fargo this morning after their truck suddenly caught fire. The driver was getting ready to take his child to daycare when he noticed something wasn't right. Then fire melted the interior, totaling it. Thankfully, no one was inside the truck when it erupted into flames. Fire officials say it was likely caused by a mechanical issue. At least four more victims have been pulled from the rubble after that condo collapse in South Florida. Rescue teams are continuing to work around the clock. This is now day seven of the search for survivors and officials are stressing that it is still very much the mission. Tomorrow, the President and First Lady will spend time with rescue teams and families of those still missing. The White House saying it'll be a very personal extended visit here. Bill Cosby is back at home tonight. His release, a surprising release from jail, coming after a ruling from the Pres uh, P uh, Pennsylvania Supreme Court vacating his sexual assault conviction. This video was taken after his conviction in 2018. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court overturned the conviction after finding an agreement with a previous prosecutor prevented him from being charged in the case. Cosby's spokesperson talked about what happened. The actor-comedian was serving a state prison term of three to ten years after a jury convicted him of drugging and molesting a Temple University ploy at his suburban estate. Minnesota lawmakers are finishing their remaining work on a $52 billion two-year budget. Education and tax bills need to be passed before the current budget expires at midnight. Legislators passed a bill that ends Governor Walz's emergency powers tomorrow, even though the governor originally planned to end the emergency Governor Walls says he reached a deal with federal officials to ensure that emergency food aid will continue without a peacetime state of emergency. More stimulus checks are hitting bank accounts. The IRS saying it issued another 2.3 million checks this month. Some of those payments included an increase for people who received less money than they were entitled to in earlier distributions. In this round, payments are also going to people for whom the IRS previously didn't have enough information. Later on Valley News Live at 5, we'll have a rundown for you of the new foods that will be offered at this year's Minnesota State Fair. But next, in weather, we'll have temperatures today that hit nearly 90 degrees in Fargo. It was in the 90s in the Northern Valley. We'll have more hot weather to speak of as we go through your holiday weekend. Hour by hour details are straight ahead.